this will be our final look at PlayStation Now as we know it today, come May 23rd in Asia, and then June for most other territories. The PS Now branding will be dropped, it'll move over to a PS Plus 3 tier system, and before all that happens, let's get one final snapshot of where PS Now sits currently when it comes to the library, the streaming functionality, and also the transitional period, because currently I'm noticing a lot of really weird things. So, I've got a, a nice direct capture going, and we're just going to take a look at PS Now, or what's left of it, because that's the thing I've noticed already, is that depending on your account and how you've interacted with it before, that will dictate what you can and cannot see, and what you can and cannot do. So, this account that I'm on currently, it's subscribed, it's active, and you can see that I've got the PS Now page in my game library, I've got recently added titles, I've got PS Now games that I've uh, recently played, and they all work, right? It's not like they don't work, but the really weird thing is that this account is now locked out of the main PS Now page, you know, the promotional page where you can actually um, either subscribe or also look through the entire catalog. I can't actually do that on this account, right? The, uh, the equivalent of, say, the, the PlayStation Plus page, which is now pinned to the main screen on the far left side. But if I do go to a profile that, say, has had PS Now but no longer does, that's where it's a bit strange. Now, I think it's always been like this, but of course my main profile is on here. This is set as my primary PS5, so everybody on this, uh, everybody logged into this PS5 can still stream games. They can do it if those games are showing up in the horizontal row. But if I were to go to uh, my game library, go over to PS Now, you can see that, hey, it says it's uh, expired, learn more. And that's where I can get this page to come up. And um, that's handy at least that I can uh, see the full library here, but if I do happen to pick one of these games uh, That's where it'll, it'll prompt me to subscribe so I can't actually stream unless my main profile Moves one of those icons to the main home screen now if I hit subscribe doesn't work uh, Before we saw that Sony got rid of the three month and one year plan because that's when they confirm that hey If you have PS now that automatically moves into premium uh, but because of that, that's where they set it down to where you can't pre-buy years of PS Now. They did it on a month-to-month -month thing, so you could do a, you could subscribe for ten dollars a month, but they cut it off to just that. Now they recently confirmed that um, if you are if you have both services plus Now, if uh, what whatever one's longer, they're going to use that one and move you into premium. That's great news, but um, that also meant that for a lot of folks where and this is the odds of this happening are much higher because PS. Plus is far more popular, but some people have stacked years of PS Plus. Sometimes they do it when PS Plus is on sale. Sometimes they do it uh, just because they know they're going to be uh, they're, they know they're going to be subscribed for a while, and so that would have that would have meant that all they had to do was subscribe to the month to month PS Now situation, and, and therefore they're locking in premium savings but they cut that off too. So you can't stack from the console, you can't do it from desktop, you can't buy a card at a store and enter it into PSN. It's temporarily turned off and they also made it so you cannot subscribe to PS Now. They completely cut it off as far as I can see, which um, again, that's Sony's prerogative. It's a very Sony move, but anyway, I'm on a, now I'm on an account that has never had PS Now and you can see it's not even showing up, right? It just, it's only PlayStation Plus. Um, so that's how they're, that's how they're handling it. And I've also noticed some games in the PS Now library, if I go back to that account that can actually see the full catalog, there are some games that are not in there, but if I search for them manually, then, um, then they show up. And that's also pretty strange, I guess. That might imply what games, what titles we might be losing once the changeover actually happens. So if I go to collections and PlayStation 2, there's only like 16 something games here. So I'm not I'm not sure how many games are affected by this, but there's only 16 titles in here. But if I go to manually search for something like Red Faction 2, which is another PS2 HD game with trophy support, um, that's on here. It says it's included. Granted, it's again asking me to subscribe, but it's if I was on my other profile, I could stream that. So. Um, there's a weird separation going on that might tell us what games are going to leave eventually. But um, for now, at least, uh, with all that said, let's start actually playing some games. So, of course, we're going to try and focus on uh, PlayStation 3 streaming primarily and also games that are, you know, the, the kind of things that are stuck on PS3, as we say, which 
I love PlayStation 3. They're not stuck to me because I have a PS3 and I have a lot of these on disc or downloaded. But for many others, uh, these games are stuck on PS3. So God of War Ascension is actually kind of an odd man out. Uh, well, that alongside all the, the PlayStation 2 and PSP ones. Uh, but Ascension in particular, because God of War 3 is actually ported to PlayStation 4. And that game looks quite good. Ascension, though, it'll be interesting to see it on uh, PlayStation Now. This is, a, this is a great game. I feel like, you know, this one's always overlooked. But Ascension's great. And probably worth pointing out, you know, immediately is that... Um... It's not like the streaming is going to change overnight once it moves over to just strictly PS Plus with the three tiers. It's going to be the same. <laughs> it's not like it's going to be some sort of night and day difference. You know, it's going to be this. Um, or at least I presume that it will just be this with the branding dropped. But for the time being at least, uh, something like God of War where the game is not that demanding, especially if you're playing on a lighter difficulty... Uh, in terms of just reaction time and things like that. The game is very, very playable via streaming. <laughs> Except you just saw some lag right there. And that's the problem. That's why people don't want to stream games. God of War is just so epic. These games are so good. And this is one of those things where the compression kind of kills how gorgeous this moment looks in the game. Santa Monica really got a lot out of PS3 in terms of visuals back then. So this is one of those showstopper games. Now, Luminous Supernova. This one's going to really test the uh, reaction time. Oh, yeah, the cat. Big time. Um, and I, I'm i sure this is not going to go over well at all. But, uh, yeah, this will really test streaming. Because for a puzzle game, so twitchy, fast-paced, it's going to... This ain't gonna be good. Oh, this. This is not good at all. What sucks too is that this is such a bright, colorful looking game, and none of it is retained over stream. Which you wouldn't even be able to tell. Like, the one thing I realized immediately is that you can't really capture streamed gameplay and really get across just how bad it looks. And the same goes for like when you're watching a trailer on YouTube for a game that you're really excited for and maybe you maybe you think visuals are disappointing but you just can't quite judge a compressed even 4K60 YouTube stream, right? You just can't do it. Uh, the game will always look better in front of you. And so the same goes here for a stream or for a streamed gameplay. It might actually look a little bit better online, but in front of you the the ugliness really starts to pull through uh so it's just yeah this this doesn't it doesn't look good and it certainly doesn't feel good it's like impossible for me to like get to confidently start really dropping down blocks here i feel like mirror's edge would be a really interesting one to try because this is another game where it's like a lot of precision and also just the way the game looks right where everything's uh so sharp and there's so much contrast going on with all the white and the red. Uh, I'm curious to see how that would look uh, via streaming. This is not... This does not feel good. Oh, this doesn't feel good at all. I can confidently say I would not want to play Mirror's Edge like this at all. It's only the main tutorial section, but... It feels bad. Leave. <laughs> now, the really weird thing about the Silent Hill HD collection is that these are PlayStation 2 games, highly regarded PS2 games, and the only way to play them is through the HD collection, which thus makes it a PlayStation 3 game, which means you have to stream them, and this is not exactly a great way to play Silent Hill 2. In fact, it's this is not very good at all. <laughs> uh, this game was... Well, a lot of the charm of the original was lost in the HD remake. And so... 
this is kind of like a worst case scenario version for this game. It would have been so much better to have a, you know, PS2 HD port on PS4 and give it, you know, trophies and everything, but that never happened. So this is the the only way to play it on a PS4 or 5 today is streamed via PS Now. And this is the other weird thing about PS Now. There's like a a ceiling on how good your internet can be. Doesn't matter if it's you know way above 25 megabits per second or slightly above that. This is the quality you get across the board. Whether you've you've got a great upload, download, my ping's great. All that stuff. There's a, a ceiling of like once you're above 25, this is just this is what you get. And if you're below 25, it can look worse than this. And that's also where you can often get kicked out of PS now if your connection is not stable enough. Wow, you know, Altered Beast actually looks and plays just fine. Might be something where if I, again, had it locally right next to me to compare, it'll look sharper and perhaps more colorful, but for such an old game, it's like um, any sort of streaming compression not going to hurt this nearly as much as something like ps4 games and that's why we're not even really doing ps4 games we all know that's not what people would do the second that downloading option was added it's like that sort of made ps now substantially better because you would never stream a ps4 game unless you're primarily playing on pc or something but even then that just it's not a very good experience you know if a game's offered in 1080p 30 fps if it's a nice, beautiful-looking, very detailed game like, say, Uncharted 4, it's going to look awful via streaming. Just terrible. And I'm also not doing too good on this, but you know what I mean. Magic Orbs. Uh, it's kind of weird that I get to play this on PS5, but um, this is a really cool 3D brick breaker that is, as far as I know, it's only on PlayStation 3 PSN. This was one title where... When Sony announced the uh, server shutdown or the PS Store closure, it was like, this was one title. I was like, whoa, wait a minute. That means we'll lose this game. And I don't want to lose it because, like, look at it. It's so cool. It's full-on 3D Brick Breaker. Rive. There we go. I was going to say, I just did nothing. It doesn't look too bad on PlayStation now. This was such a fun game. Got the PSN 100% a long time ago. It's got DLC too, which I believe uh, this is included on PlayStation now. I think most PS Now games have all DLC items included. Although, don't quote me on that. I think it does depend on the game. It's always so silly that this still has to happen when it's happening on a PS3 server blade. You know what I mean? Like... And just for those that uh, are unaware, that's what PlayStation. That's how PlayStation Now works. Is that uh, they use PS3 server blades. There's eight PS3s on one uh, one board, one server board, and those are all rack mounted, and you're playing off of a what is principally still PlayStation 3 hardware, and that's why you can actually um, open up a modified PlayStation 3 XMB. Save data, you've got PSN, that's how you can still trophy hunt, and also your friends list as well. So it works exactly as it should, but uh, that's always so funny to me. I am so bad at Crazy Taxi, but uh, this game is really fast paced, and so I'm, I'm not, not doing too good here. But it looks okay, I guess, right? And that's kind of one of the weird things I brought up in uh, another PS Now video a long time ago, where oddly enough, the compression definitely hurts the uh, image quality, obviously. But in certain situations, it actually sort of evens out the jaggies in, you know, inadvertently, right? It's not meant to do that per se, but in games that look particularly like a little bit rough around the edges, they... The compression almost comes in and helps a little bit in a weird way. That sort of applies to Crazy Taxi. 
Uh, but then again, I'm sure the game looks sharper on a PlayStation 3. And this game is leaving soon, along with a few other uh, Sega titles. So for the time being, we don't actually know if um, Sony worked out a new license or not for a lot of these games. We'll see. I am interested to find out if uh, Sony can still lock down games like Wet for their services, where this game came out on PS3, 360, but it's a Bethesda game. And, you know, we all saw that when they acquired Bethesda, now Activision, the gut reaction immediately was all that content is exclusive, and also the back catalog, presumably, will only ever get remastered or shipped on their platforms, their services. But with the uh, Activision uh, acquisition, we've actually seen that language change a bit. And now it's something where they're being a bit more forthcoming about, you know, letting that content go to other platforms or working out potential deals. I'm holding out one. It's not doing it. So uh, just, yeah, I'm, I'm curious if that might be uh, still possible. And obviously it would be in Sony's interest to try and get as much content as they possibly can for their services. Um, this game this game was so fun, though. It's like, uh, it reminds me of uh, Stranglehold. Very similar, but those games are so fun. Uncharted Drake's Fortune. Um, this one's really interesting because arguably there's not many reasons why you'd play this version. Um, of course, there's the novelty of it. Of course, there's trophy hunting. But we have a, a really good remaster on PS4. Um, and it's principally the PS3 game, right? So you're not really losing anything there. It's all the essence of Uncharted is still the way it was on PlayStation 3. But there's also the case of if Sony were to ever properly emulate PlayStation 3, they would be, you know, testing and validating games like Uncharted. There may not be a reason to emulate that game, but this this would be the kind of game that you would do because uh, First Party and more notably Naughty Dog were their home to the ice team. They fully flexed the PlayStation 3 early on and throughout that entire life cycle, right? They were really pushing the self-processor. They were using the SPEs. And these are the kind of games you want to get done. These are the kind of games you want to really nail down before you attempt to emulate the entire PS3 library on a larger scale and have a reliable emulator that hits, uh, that has a good success rate across various games, right? You can maybe focus on a title that is not nearly as SP intensive, but then you're not really building a, a good emulator that's going to work on, that's going to work reliably across a lot of games. Uncharted is what you would want to do. And uh, if the rumor is to be believed that Sony is potentially looking into PS3 emulation, I would gather they're looking at titles like Uncharted, Resistance, Last of Us, God of War 3, you know, various first party games uh, where also they can work directly with those first parties to potentially achieve it. Well, let's look at the uh, library one last time. Uh, PS2, very small list here, so... Ape Escape, Hot Shots, Tennis, Love Destroy All Humans, Okage, Shadow King, Fanavision, launch title there, Siren. Um, all good games, but really sucks that the PS2 to PS4 program was so short-lived. Uh, that's why, again, I do not expect trophies. But, um, yeah, PlayStation exclusives. Let's uh, look at that. Uh, he's ugly. It, isn't it baffling that somehow we have greatest hits labels on digital games? This always drove me nuts. PlayStation hits on digital games. Take those labels off. What are you doing? Either way, um, you know, a ton of PlayStation heavy hitters here. Uh, Tokyo Jungle, that's another one. We didn't, uh, we didn't get a chance to play that. Resistance, of course. Um, oh, this list is very short. That's what I'm saying. This doesn't make sense. This was much larger before. So there's a lot of games actually missing. And I know for a fact that uh, these games are still streamable for now. But uh, that curiosity is really getting to me. I want to know what is going to happen with these 340 games that are only going to be on the premium service and they're going to be classified as classic games 
across PS1, 2, 3, and PSP. PSP sounds so cool. That'll be great to have uh, playable on console, but um, you know, get stuff like Bio Bionic Commando rearmed. I only had the first one on PS3. You've got some fodder in here, like cars. Who's really playing that? A lot of Dynasty Warrior games on here. My buddy loves these. Kudos to him for being able to play them. Eat Lead, The Return of Mad Hazard. I think that's an easy platinum. Everyday Shooter. This was made by one person and shipped on PS3 very early. So it was one of the very first uh, PSN titles. And that was uh, what a lot of the press was for that game back in the day. Flow, of course, that game company. That was really cool, too. Ninja Gaiden games on here. See, some of these might just leave in mass, right? So Ninja Gaiden doesn't have a expiration date, but again, that's what's so questionable about the number that they threw out. Because in theory, they could be over a thousand games if they're, you know, keeping a, maj a majority of what's already on here, but it doesn't sound like that's the case. These are all good games. You know, it, it is a shame that uh, they have to be streamed. And if the streaming quality was, you know, better, it wouldn't be terrible. And if we go to the PlayStation 4 games, where they're all downloadable, which, you know, what's, what's the point of that category? That's just PS4 and PS2 put together, essentially. PS4, you've got, well, you know, a lot of smaller stuff, more niche stuff. Games are games. There's got to be something in here for everybody, right? And that's where, when PS Now got down to $60 for a year, it's like, look, I, I get it. PS Now is like, doesn't really have a good reputation, but my lord, you got to be able to find something on here worth, uh, worth the 60 bucks for an entire year, mind you. So you can get a lot of playtime in on some of this stuff. Seeing the Final Fantasies roll in, that was uh, really cool. Recently, it was getting better. So we saw a calculated effort to make it better. Gravity Rush, Little Nightmares. I mean, you've got some pretty well-known titles on this. Moving out, Nidhogg, that's a lot of fun. Got Prey, Pixel Junk Games, love these. I feel like those are underappreciated. Hubert, who doesn't love Rapala fishing? Resogun, who still has this claimed from PS4 launch day, huh? Or that first month at least. That was our day one PS Plus game on PS4. And you know, the PS4 catalog, a lot of this stuff too might also leave because it's gonna be 400 PS4 and now PS5 games. That's great, we'll finally have native PS5 games on a subscription service that Sony offers. But um, how is that number calculated? Because currently there's about 400 PS4 games. So that might imply that some PS4 stuff is leaving as well. So to make room at least for the PS5 games. How many PS5 games are they gonna have? We don't know. Um, but that might imply that some more, a lot more PS4 stuff is leaving than we otherwise would think. So, it's not a bad library, but it's just got such a bad name behind it. Or a lot of that name carries so much baggage from the individual rentals to then going to a one price uh, subscription, which I think was 100 bucks at the time for a year, then it went down to 60. Um, it makes sense to consolidate and get rid of the PS Now name. I am hopeful for uh, Sony's new service and what they plan to do with it over time. I'm sure at launch it's gonna get slammed with criticism and by all means, I'm sure there's plenty of areas where it's deserved, but over time is what matters. And uh, I would hope that they flesh it out to be a very good value proposition to an engaged PlayStation customer. Well, that is it for PlayStation Now, 2014 to 2022, RIP. Uh, hopefully the new service is a lot better, but um, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't just yet, please consider subscribing for the best PlayStation news, reviews, and updates that are here on YouTube. You can also follow me on Twitter at Mystic Ryan, and that is it. I will see you all in my next video. You take it easy.